the next story that I'm going to tell you about is one of the most extraordinary in the book. I heard it when I was in um, Chicago for a child survivors conference, and a woman called Ilsa Loeb told me that her uncle had sold pictures for Hitler, and that immediately aroused my interest. And apparently uh, the story is that Samuel Morgenstern, who was actually born in Budapest, opened a glazier's shop in Vienna around about 1910. And in 1911, or thereabouts, Hitler came in with three pictures that he wanted him to sell. And Samuel um, sold picture frames, and he said uh, that really it was much better if you had a picture frame to have a picture in it. They sold much better. So he bought the pictures from Hitler, and over a few years he bought quite a lot of pictures from him. In fact, when his house and his business were um, sold under Aryanization, there were still several pictures by Hitler uh, there. Um, so it all went well with the, the Morgan Stearns. His wife was called Emma, and they had one child, but I don't know what his name was, until the Nazis came to power. And then gradually the, um, the Morgan Stearns were persecuted, and they, they lost their business. He wasn't allowed to trade, and things were very difficult for them. And they were in their 60s, so they were struggling. So they remembered when Hitler was a lad and he came into their shop and they decided to write to him and they drafted a letter which you will be able to see and it's a very poignant letter and it's very apologetic but it does ask for Hitler to help them with their plight. Unfortunately, Hitler never got the letter. It got sidetracked by the bureaucracy and ended up in a filing cabinet where it rested for about 56 years. Um, and when it was discovered, it was found that somebody had written Jew in the margin. So the poor Morgan Stearns were taken away, and they both suffered, and they died separately. Um, and it's not recorded what happened to the son. What is particularly poignant about this story is that Hitler had a um, Jewish doctor who cared for his mother when she was dying. And when uh, Dr. Bloch found himself in the same situation, being threatened with all sorts of dire consequences, he too wrote to Hitler, but perhaps because he was a professional man or um, better versed in these things, his letter got through to Hitler and Hitler did protect him. And he wasn't touched at all by the Gestapo and he was able to go to New York and take all his possessions, which was very, very rare in those days. And so the outcome for Dr. Bloch was so very different to that of the Morgan Stearns. And I think it's a particularly tragic story given that they'd had a relationship with Hitler. And Hitler had a lot of Jewish friends when he was young, apparently. One of them was called Reinhold Hanisch, and he got away to America. Um, apparently, uh, Hitler tried to kill him in the mid-30s because he didn't want him to talk about uh, their, their youth together and all the Jews that he'd known. And um, Hanisch wrote a series of articles called I Was Hitler's Buddy. So um, the story got out.